input lag and stuttering. Lots of people deal with it daily, but what could be worse? Playing against other people online with it. But is there something worse than that? Have you heard about port forwarding before? If it's not set up, your games or apps can have problems. It's like input lag. This is true on your PC or Mac and your router. Well, what the heck is port forwarding anyway? Think about it this way. Prior to entering a country, you've got to cross the border and go through customs and immigration. They check and ensure you're following the rules and are not bringing in anything illegal into the country. Anyone not following the rules or bringing in anything illegal will not be permitted to enter the country. Your router has a firewall or a border which allows access to the internet. It also allows parts of the internet to communicate to you, to your computer. Software updates like a Windows update from Microsoft or an iOS update from Apple are examples of what would normally be allowed to get in. But most apps or games may not be able to fully communicate to you. It's like you're hearing 9 out of 10 words someone is saying and in turn, they can only hear 9 out of 10 words of what you're saying. It can be annoying and downright frustrating. In games where you're sending and receiving data or info, this can be a problem especially in FPS games. Port forwarding is allowing the data or info to be sent to the server and received by you, freely, without a filter, no drop words while communicating. Makes sense, right? If you look at a game like Fortnite, it should work fine. Key thing here, should. But if you don't allow all the data to pass through, then something like sniping someone in Fortnite may or may not fully register. Or, if someone is firing at you, you may not be able to react and respond quickly, and you could be dead. It might be okay occasionally in a deathmatch, as long as you can respond, but it's the end of the road in a battle royale. I'm going to use Fortnite as an example here, but this can be said with any game such as COD, Valorant, Battlefield, PUBG, or any productivity app or services like Voice over IP and VPNs. Port forwarding must be set up on your PC or Mac, as well as your router. I'll be taking you through steps using Windows 10. Mac will be covered here. We will also cover routers. Stay tuned though, I have a special bonus of what Epic Games is not telling you. There are other ports you need to forward in Fortnite, which are not listed on their site. What are they? If you're new to the channel or want to see more videos like this, smash that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Step 1. Allow an app or game on your PC or Mac to pass through your firewall. In Windows 10, go to the search bar and type in Fire or Firewall to open Windows Defender Firewall. You can alternatively find this in the Network and Security section in Settings. Click on Allow an app or feature through Windows Defender Firewall. Click the Change Settings button. Click on Allow another app. Go to Browse. You will need to find the app you want to add. In this example, I will look for Fortnite. I have it installed in a different directory. Since most people are using the default directory, I'll put an annotation in for the default path. For Fortnite, you want to add Fortnite Client Win64 Shipping.exe. Double click the app or select it and hit open. Hit the add button. Make sure it is set to private and public, or if you know which one to select, choose private or public. Click on OK. From a security perspective, it is preferred to add the app where possible. That way, Windows will know when to open the ports and when to close them. If you add the ports only, you create a vulnerability for people to get into your computer because the ports will always be open. Here are the instructions I can gather for Mac. I believe I have the exact file name for Mac, but I could be mistaken. First, open the dock and go to System Preferences. Next, open Security and Privacy. Third, open Firewall. Then go to Firewall Options, hit Add Application button, then find Fortnite Client Mac Shipping. Ensure the option next to the app is set to allow incoming connections. Hit OK. 
that's the setup for Windows and Mac. Makes sense so far guys? Let me know in the comments if you're getting good results out of this. Step 2. What do you set up for port forwarding on your router? Check the app or manufacturer's website. If it's difficult to find, we can try portforward.com and see what is listed. In this example, Fortnite has been around for a while. Let's take note of these ports and the TCP and UDP settings. Now, Epic Games has made it much more painful to know what to forward in Fortnite. Instead, they now display everything because of their app store, I guess. I hope this gets fixed in the future as it will be easier to find for everyone. Ports 12,000 to 65,000 is an immediate red flag for me. No app today has that large of a port range. We're not in the 90s. Fortunately, we're going to leverage a cool app called CFOS Speed to figure out the ports to forward for Fortnite. This can be used for any app or game, so it's a definite win here. You could use Netstat in Windows, but this helps you understand what app or game is using these ports. Now, this app only works for Windows, but I imagine an app exists out there for Mac. There's a 30-day trial if you want to try it, and I'll link it in the video description. Now, let's launch Fortnite. Wait a minute, what's this? Port 22222 UDP? That's not listed in the old port list. Very sneaky epic. Let's get into Creative or Battle Royale. Port 9000-ish? UDP? That's nowhere listed. Bad epic. Yikes, man. Okay, so full disclaimer here. Prior to me recording this video, I messed around with Fortnite a lot and determined the port range is actually 9000 to 9100 UDP. It's still a big miss on Epic's part for not telling people. Let's let everyone know about these missing ports so that you can improve their game. Feel free to share this video with people so that they all know about this missing port range. Clearly, I'm going to use CFOS speed if there's a new update to a game to see if something has changed going forward. Okay, we have the ports, now let's set up the router. Step 3. Adding the ports to the port forwarding section in your router. First. Log into your router. Now, there's so many routers out there and every router site will look different. You're going to need to look for port forwarding. It could be by itself or listed under a category like WAN then virtual server slash port forwarding. Turn on port forwarding. Let's add new entries or rows. If you have an ASUS AX11000, go to add profile. We're going to call this Fortnite TCP UDP1. The protocol is going to be set for both TCP and UDP. We're going to take a subset of what Epic Games listed, our findings on portforward.com, and include what we found through CFOS speed. I will include port 433, but I question its validity. You can add it if you wish, as it may be a mistake by Epic. For the first one, I will set the external ports to 433, 3478 to 3479, 5060, 5062, and 5222. I can't add any more here. Under internal IP address, I will find my gaming PC. Note, you may need to type in the IP address manually with your setup. Hit OK. Let's add another row to finish up TCP and UDP. Since the service name cannot be repeated, I'll put in Fortnite TCP UDP2. Protocol is both. For external ports, I'll put in 5795 to 5847 and 6250. For internal IP address, I'll select my gaming PC and hit OK. Now, let's add the UDP ports. For the service name, put in Fortnite UDP1. The protocol is going to be UDP, external ports 9000 to 9100, and 22222. For internal IP address, I'll select my gaming PC and hit OK. That's it. 
You may need to hit another OK or Save button on your router. You may also need to reboot your router. If you have other apps or games, you'll need to look online to find out what you need to port forward. Remember to do this on both your computer and router. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you want to see more. Now, here are a couple videos you might like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.